Okay, gonna look at 5.8 coordinate proofs today. So, um, coordinate proof, uh, I've got some placement suggestions here. So a lot of times you'll be asked to place a figure on the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane's an x, y axis, by the way. So you might be asked to place a triangle or a rectangle or a parallelogram or something like that on the coordinate plane. Um, it's helpful uh, if uh, you put the figure in certain places. It's not required, but it just makes things easier if you, if you put a, a vertex at 0, 0 at the origin. Okay? And then um, if you can place as many fig uh, sides as you can of the figure on um, the x and y axes, that will help as well. So I'll just say the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, so um, on this first example here, we're going to place a triangle with sides A and B on the coordinate plane. Okay, so I've got a triangle. I'm going to put one of my corners at the origin. Okay, and then I'm going to put, uh, I'm, I'm going to have two of my sides be on the X and Y axis. So I can put the, the points wherever I want on these axes, uh, and they don't have to be on the axes. It just make like I said, it's going to make things much easier. So, um, I'll put them there and there, okay, and then I'll draw my triangle in here, okay, and I know I can see the actual units on the grid here, but I'm going to ignore those for a second because I'm finding um, these lengths in terms of A and B, okay, so I'm just going to say that the bottom uh, side has a length of A, um, and then this side has a length of B, okay. And let's start finding some of the, the coordinates of the vertices then. I don't know the length of this side yet, but I'll get to that in a minute. But let's get the, uh, the, the vertices. I know this is 0, 0. Okay. And um, now I can just say, going from the origin, I'm going A units to the right and 0 units up because it's on the, uh, the x-axis. Okay. And we can do the same kind of thing up here. I went 0 to the right and then B units up. And I know on this particular one, you know, you could put the numbers in, but again, I'm doing things in terms of A and B so that it's kind of a generic triangle, okay? So this asks for the coordinates of the vertices. Well, got that part done. Now I need the side lengths. I've got two of the three side lengths. I need the third side length. So in order to get the third side length, I'm going to use the distance formula, which looks like this. You're going to subtract the x's and square, you're going to subtract the y's and square, and you add those two um, values together and take the square root of the whole thing, okay? So um, I'm looking for this side here, for the length of this side, okay? So let me, let me just uh, label this C, okay? Now this is A units and B units, and this is C units, because I just said it's C, but I want to write C in terms of A and B. So this is for side C. We're going to use the distance formula to find the length using these coordinates, okay? So let's subtract the two x's. I'll call, I'll call this x1 and y1 up here, my first x-y pair. This can be my second x-y pair, okay? So for the x's, I'm going to do um, A minus 0 in the first parentheses. Okay, and then for the y's, I'll do 0 minus b. And I'll square that, okay? All right, and then let's start simplifying. a minus 0 is just a, so I've got a squared. And then I've got negative b squared. Well, let's think about that. That's negative b times negative b. Negative b times negative b would be positive b squared. A negative times a negative is positive. So that simplifies this, okay? And it's really easy to make um, a mistake here and think, oh, I've got a square root and, and some things squared, so then this is going to equal a plus b. But that's actually incorrect. You can't do that. Um, because if you multiply a plus b times itself, it's not going to equal a squared plus b squared. It's going to equal, you'd have to foil it out, and you'd have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Not the same thing, okay? So we can't go any further with, with this. So we're just going to put that as our third side length. So now we've got that third side length in terms of a and b. Okay? All right. All right, let's try another. Let's put a rectangle on the coordinate plane. So again, I'm going to put... Uh, one of the corners at zero, zero, OK? 
Okay, um, and then I'll just put these points wherever. Okay, so I've got one side of my rectangle like that and one like that, and I'd have to put the third corner right up here to make this a rectangle, right? So now I've got a rectangle, four right angles, um, and let's start labeling the uh, the sides. Well, the, the, the two of the sides are going to be A and B, so let's say that this is A and this is B again. Well, in a rectangle, the opposite sides are um, are congruent, so if the bottom is A, this would be A, and if this is B, this is B, okay? Um, oh, it actually doesn't ask me to label all the sides. It doesn't ask me to label the corners either, but I am going to need the coordinates of the corners, okay? So, um, down here, I'm going A units to the right, zero units up, and then to get to this corner, I'd go um, zero, zero units right and B units up, so I'm going to do zero B, okay? All right. Um, so, it, I'd go A to the right, B up. So this would be A, B. Okay, so now it's asking us to find the length of one diagonal in terms of A and B. So I don't want to use the numbers, even though, you know, I could put in that this is 5 and this is 4, so 5, 4 up here. But, but I'm using A and B so that it's generic, so that it works for any rectangle, okay? So, um, I could use either diagonal. It turns out the two diagonals are going to be congruent. Um, in, uh, in a rectangle anyway, so they'll be the same length. So you could use either one, it doesn't really matter. So let's say I use this rectangle. Well, let's find the length of that. I'm going to use the distance formula, just like I did on the previous problem. Okay, so I've already got the formula up here. I'm going to be subtracting the two x's. Let me call this x1, y1. This can be x2, y2. So for my x's, I'll do a minus 0 and square it. For my y's, I'll do b minus 0 and square that. Okay, then this would give me a squared plus b squared. And just like the last problem, I can't um, simplify this any further. I'm going to have to leave it like so. If you had just, uh, if you had the square root of a squared, yeah, that would be a. But when you've got two terms underneath the radical, you don't want to take the square root of of, of it because it's going to be it's more complicated than than you might think initially okay okay on the next page we're going to classify a triangle by its sides okay so let's think about different possibilities for classifying this triangle by its sides it could be equilateral if all three sides are congruent kind of looks equilateral it could be isosceles if just two sides are congruent, and if no sides are congruent, it'd be scaling, right? So those are my three options. So um, you, uh, some people will just look at this and make a guess, um, but we don't want to make a guess. We want to be sure. So we're going to use um, some coordinate ge geometry to figure out what the lengths of these sides are. And we're going to be using the distance formula, okay? So just like on the last two problems, we're going to be using distance formula to find the length of all three sides. Okay, I'm going to take that back. I'm not going to use the distance formula to find the length of the bottom of this triangle because it's since it's a horizontal line, we can just count the units, right? So this goes from an x value of 2 to an x value of 4. It's going to go 4 units, or you can just go 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 4 units long across the bottom, okay? So I'm just going to put that into my picture. This is 4 units. So if this is equilateral, then all the sides should have a length of 4. So let's see if that happens. So let's work on the left side of this triangle. That's side AB, just to keep track of what I'm doing here. Let's find the length, okay? So um, I'm going to subtract my x's. I'll do 4 minus 2 for my x's and square. And then 4 minus 1. Sorry about the uh, bell there. 4 minus 1 for my y's, and I'll square that as well. So I've got 2 squared plus 3 squared. Okay, 4 plus 9. So that came out to root 13. We could put that into a calculator, but it's not going to equal 4 because the square root of, of 16 is 4. Okay, so hey, it's not equilateral. Let's test this last side. Maybe it's, uh, I can't tell so far if it's isosceles or scalene. So let's try BC. Okay, so distance formula again. I'm subtracting my x's first. I'll do 6 minus 4 for my x's 
and square, and then I'll do 1 minus 4 for my y's and square that. Okay, and now I've got 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. Well, that would be 4 plus 9. Negative 3 times itself is positive 9, right? And that comes out to root 13. So now, looking at the picture, I can see, oh, I've got two congruent sides. That means this is isosceles. It's not equilateral. Isosceles. And there's how that's spelled. Okay. All right. One more. Let's do a two-column proof. This is a coordinate proof. At least it has an element of it that's a coordinate proof. Okay, some of it we can do in the old-fashioned way. So we're trying to find that these two triangles are congruent. So first I've got my given info here. Okay, now let's process that given info. It says BD bisects angle ABC. Angle ABC is the angle at the top. So if that bisects that angle, it means it cuts it into congruent angles. So that means that angle ABD is congruent to angle CBD. Okay, and the reason I know that is because I know what bisect means. This is the definition of bisect. Okay, so hey, I've got one pair of angles. Then I'm looking at this and thinking, oh, I've got that shared side. So this side is going to um, be congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So I can say BD is congruent to BD by the reflexive property of congruence. So I'll put a little congruence symbol for a reflexive property of congruence. Okay? I still need something else, though, before I can show the triangles are congruent. So I want to find one of the pairs of sides congruent. So I could either use these two sides or those two. Okay? I'm going to go for these two ones. Um, and here's where the, uh, the coordinate geometry is going to come in. What I need to do then is use the distance formula to find the lengths of these two sides. This was the point six zero, by the way. That got uh, cropped off there. Okay, so I'm going to try to find that AB is congruent to BC. And the only way I can do that is with the uh, distance formula. Okay, so I'm putting a little asterisk down here because I'm going to put the um, I'm going to put the distance formula down here to show that those are actually congruent. Okay, so just writing the formula again real quick. This is what I'm using. Okay, so let's find the length of AB. So subtracting my x's, I'm going to do three minus zero and square, and for my y's, five minus zero and square that. Okay, now I got three squared plus five squared. That's going to be 9 plus 25. And that comes out to the square root of, oops, I'm off screen a little bit. Sorry, square root of 34. Okay, that would be a little less than 6. It would be 5.8 or something like that. But I'm just going to leave that as root 34 because I just want to check if this side comes out to root 34 or not. It should come out to root 34 if those really are congruent sides. So let's see. Okay, so on these, my x's, I'm going to do 6 minus 3 and square. And for my y's, I'll do 0 minus 5 and square. Okay, so I've got 3 squared plus negative 5 squared. Remember, negative 5 times itself is positive 25. So I've got 9 plus 25. Hey, that came out to root 34 again. So now I've shown that those really are congruent. And the way I did that is by the definition of congruent. Because congruent means they have the same measure. Okay, so I showed they have the same measure. Here's my evidence down here. That's why I put the asterisk for that step. I like to just put my evidence separately so the proof doesn't get really long. Um, okay, um, and now I've got enough info. Now I got these are congruent. Now those triangles are congruent. I got two sides and an included angle, so they're going to be congruent by SAS. So triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD by. SAS triangle congruency um, theorem. And there we go. All right, that's the end of the section, and I'll see you next time.